In the Panhandle Plains of Texas, cotton is keen. It's here where you'll find the largest cotton patch in the world. This year, the high plains are high in cotton. Current estimates have the total yield to be around 8.3 million bales for the state. 5.7 million is expected to come from the high plains alone. What makes the year unique is a bumper crop that's coupled with high prices that spiked at $1.50 a pound and still holds strong at well over a buck. It's very rare that this time of year our price goes up. And this year our prices continue to go up even at harvest time. Yantis farms both irrigated and dry land cotton. He expects to make anywhere from two to four bales to the acre. You'd have to go back to 1973 to find a time when high yields and high prices came together. Yantis says what followed was a much needed economic boost, proving that the cotton industry benefits go way beyond the farm gate. You can't put a probably a dollar amount on it. It's a, it's a valuable asset around here. It would be, you'd be surprised at how many people make their whole living in the cotton industry, not, not just our producers, but uh, folks that work in and around our gins and, and to help uh, you know, to harvest the crop. Robertson says the gin has a record of over 32,000 bales that it kicked out in 2007. Though the year is not over, that record looks to fall. The farmer's co-op is expecting a gin between 35 and 40,000 bales this year. It's a far cry of times past. Just a few years ago, cotton prices were abysmal, less than half of what they are today. The search was on as farmers looked for replacement crops that could prove to be more profitable. The tide has turned. When it's all said and done, the Lubbock area cotton harvest alone could fetch close to $3 billion. But even with the high prices, farmers are quick to point out that nobody's going to get rich off the new markets. It took a pretty savvy businessman to hold out till it got to the price it is now. Otherwise, you were probably marketing your cotton when it got to 89, 90 cents, and you thought, man, I've never seen this before, and you, you sold out early and you were done. For most farmers, it's a recovery year, a chance to make up ground on a string of years with less than stellar prices and yields that were hurt due to a September freeze in 2009. As Mother Nature has proven time and time again, high yields don't count until the cotton is in the gin. West Texas weather provides no guarantees. A late October storm left some crops in ruins. Lubbock County farmer Earl Forrester lost over half his crop on two separate fields. He said the 67 percent here and the other farmer 61. And that's quite a loss. That's over a bale to acre loss. And I'm hoping I'll get a bale yet for an acre, but I might not. Fields that once looked like snow-covered plains are now host of barren stalks. The high-quality fibers lay in the mud, useless. Forrester does have crop insurance, but he says it won't cover near the damage. He says it will make up about half the loss on a $400 acre investment. The price is good, but that, you know, that's, that's where you lost a bunch too. When the when price is up and you got it laying on the ground. <laughs> so, you know, that's bad too. Basking in a bumper year, producers hope history doesn't repeat itself. While 1973 was the last time prices and yields matched up on the high end, Yantis recalls that 1974 almost ruined everybody. However, the prospects for 2011 are bright. Contracts are already being offered for next year's crop, which could allow farmers another opportunity to cash in. It's kind of rare to have that forecast this time of year for both years, but it would sure help if we had two years back to back with decent prices and because a lot of it last year, that September 23rd frost up in this area hurt a lot of the grades on the cotton and set a lot of people back. And so we need some help paying back that year and going on future. For TFB News, Matt Felder, Littlefield.